Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things his dark materials. Your dark materialists are myself, Alaric, who's just bursting at the seams to talk about this episode. And Travis joins us here. Travis, what was your thoughts? Initial gut reaction. Bears. I got bears. I was so excited because he had the big sky metal bear armor. And I can't even form a sentence because I love Yurik more uh, Burnison so much. So, Joanna, what did you think? Um, so I, ha- I was, I-, I was speechless. Jack and I both, I was watching with my son. We both were like squeeing when <laughs> we did, when, um, when you were, it came on screen, but I mean, I was, I was feeling lots of feels this episode. I was up and down. There was a bit of a roller coaster for me and yeah, I know we'll get to it at some point, but it, I felt two, uh, two sides of a coin here. Oh, I'm Ooh. intrigued. Yeah. Okay. All right. I uh, will. I almost want to start there. Do we need to get into the episode or is this, can you give me like, give me like where you're coming from? So Lee Scoresby, mm-hmm. number one, badass outfit. Like Great just, outfit. just, oh, oh my God. I wrote a, I wrote a whole note just about his coat. Like his coat, coat was amazing. Hester was amazing. Mm-hmm. And she was beautiful and she was exactly how I pictured her. Can demons have mannerisms? Yeah, mannerisms mm-hmm. and just like I, all of those things. And it was so, so fantastic. The balloon was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then he opened his mouth. <laughs> and stuff came out. And I was a little like, no, don't. There was like not an accent there but kind of an accent there. And I wish he would have done like no accent there. Yeah. So I had all of this love for so much of it. And even the way he did other things, but every time he tried to have a twang, it just was breaking my heart. You know, I was going to say that I thought he was for the most part, not really going for any accent. I, I picked up like when he s- was singing at the beginning, mm-hmm. which is actually pretty delightful. Their little song when they were humming together, especially. But I, I didn't think he was really going for a lot. Only a couple times, be- even at the end, you know, he he's sort of just the way he says bear. It's just like normal. He's not yeah. saying bear. Mm-hmm. He's not saying bear. He could talk like this if he wanted to. That's how people talk in the South, right? <laughs> but he's not, you know. Right. He's not. He's not doing Mary Poppins. He's not doing. True. He's just sort of doing something. Right. Right. He also has a, a higher register, a, a very like. He's got a very young register, a young kind of the 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 register of his voice is a little a little higher. Mm-hmm. Um, so he doesn't carry a, it doesn't carry a lot of weight or gravitas, but that's kind. It could kind of work too because he's sort of light on his feet in a little in a way. And mm-hmm. He's younger and kind of like bouncing around all the time. Uh, I mean, I I don't know. I I, th- I think I'm I'm okay with going with with this. But, you know, it's so hard for me to get Same Sam way. Elliott out of my head. Who's just so like gravelly and gruff and and rough around the edges and has a natural accent. And, you know, it, it it's such a departure from that. It's not like, oh, it's not even adjacent where they're like, oh, let's get, uh, you know, Jeff Bridges to do his. You know, it's like it's, oh. it's very different. It's a very different direction. I kind of think that was conscious. You yeah, know? it's like, let's like, we're not going to get that. Again. Not be Sam Elliott. Mm-hmm. because Lin-Manuel Miranda trying to be Sam Elliott would have been the worst thing in the world. Would have been Can Lin-Manuel imagine? Miranda trying to be British. It, does. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work. But at the same time, though, I see what Joanne is saying, that um, there's a hint, like a couple of times, and Joanna, both of you know better than I do, you know, what that's supposed to sound like. Mm. And... To me, it was just like, eh, it didn't feel right. But at the same time, I see that he's doing something different. And I'm sure if they did backstory of Lee Scoresby, we'd find out, oh, he lived all over. And he's got a hint of everything. Right. You know? I mean, I mean, other things worked for me. I really liked the fact that his character, 
did have that spunkiness, you know, right away they pulled out the fact that he was like playing cards. And that's something that later in the book, he, well, at least in the book he uses, and I don't know if they'll play that part out at all in the series, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as they move, as they move North. But um, I liked that. I liked that there was sort of, you know, he was a, he was kind of a, yeah, he was a thief. I mean, he was fighting people on purpose to like get stuff to be able to, I guess, hawk. And, and, you know, there was a lot of, of, um, of fun, of fun things, I think going there. Mm. Um, so that's why it pained me every time I heard it because I really <laughs> didn't, I really liked, yeah, I, I didn't mind that. He, I don't, it doesn't bother me that he's not Sam Elliott. Like that's not, that wasn't yeah. what it was. It sure. wasn't that at all. And he looks great. Like he physically looks like amazing. Mm-hmm. Although I never love just mustaches. Very he's rarely. A, he's got a little bit he's of got extra like a going. Five, not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if that'll grow out a little bit as time goes on. Like whether or there, he's going to be trimming it a lot. Yeah. I feel like that mustache is his luck. And we're going to have to live with that. <laughs> 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 so we, um, we open on Lee. We get to see the balloon. We get to see a beautiful sky mm-hmm. and a beautiful, it's just kind of nice moment between between he and Hester on, you know, having continued adventures together. Um, we spot that the Egyptians are sailing in in the, in the very big vessel that they're they're coming into. And Trollison, we get to see Trollison. Mm-hmm. And I really think they made a beautiful Trollison. Trollison is neat. It is very neat. It's it like lived in. Yeah. It reminded me of um, Robert Townsend, not Robert Townsend. That's Meteor Man guy. Um, the guy who, the Popeye. Remember Robert Williams Popeye? Yeah, that was Robert Altman. Robert Altman, thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, his, it reminded me of the the sea town that Popeye lived in. Yeah, in that like a fully and, realized set. Yes, that, that feels like it's 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 three hundred and sixty degrees. There's something going on behind you, even though you can't see it. Yep. Yep. The sheet metal and the, the, the plastic sheeting, you know, that, that you walk through when you're in like a, you know, like a meat, there's like, in you know, like a, a meat facility of some kind, you know, yeah. some of that stuff. There's like blood on the ground, the, there's frozen water, but it's kind of dirty. Like everything's like, it feels like where it is. It feels like of a place. Yeah. It had a feel to me too of like a gold rush town. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it just like like there's like whatever for whatever reason that Charleston was put there as some kind of hub or whatever, and that they're still they're still developing that. I mean, you could see things were up, you know, like not cranes, but like you could see like things were scaffolded and things were still being sort of expanded, like they're trying to you know, add, make it bigger and it, you know, it it was it was neat. It was neat. Um Yeah. I, I felt like it was a great, it was a great um, set. Like it was a great environment. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The bar, it was kind of like an old West bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lee, Lee gets into fight. I like when Lee's fighting and like Hester's like kind of cheering him on, but also like mocking him for making like <laughs> fighting mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go, you can't go up Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a big Hester fan. Yeah. I Hester's really great. Oh yeah. Like Hester. Yeah, she's she may be my favorite part of this second favorite part of this episode. And she really is in it a lot and says she really a lot. Is. Oh, yeah, she's, she's very vocal in this. And I and it's funny to bring that up because in the book, they make a note of saying that Hester doesn't talk very much. Mm-hmm. Like she kind of talks when Lee talks and that kind of thing. But this Lee is yammery. He, yes. he's, he, he's he talks a lot. Okay. So his Hester talks a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I li- I yeah. like it. I, I and that's the thing. And I, and you know, I it's definitely not fair for us. And I, and I know I was guilty of it before this episode. It's definitely not fair for us to compare Lin Manuel Miranda to Sam Elliott because mm-hmm. it's not that one's better than the other. They're both very bringing very different things mm-hmm. to this this role. It's you know, with Hester as talkative as she is, it made me think of scenes from the the uh, subtle knife where she's more verbose, you know, specifically, you know, the scenes, scenes on the boulder, you know, like how Mm -hmm. she's sort of coaching and talking and talking through what the next steps are and talk to her. And it's a little bit, it's not jarring in the book, but it's like, Oh, this is different. You know, she's, she's talking a lot more in this moment. This is, 
how they fight. This is how they do it. And it was nice to get a little peek into that into that relationship. Yeah. So Lyra and the Egyptians are there. They're unloading. Lyra's sort of um, spends a lot of time with Farder Quorum in this episode. This is like yep. a real Lyra Farder Quorum kind of episode. They spend a lot of time together. They talk about themselves to each other. Farder Quorum, uh, he says at one point um he's just following her lead you know he's just sort of like following her around she's doing she's got her own ideas and he's kind of just like in the book he's he's fascinated by her and he's Uh he's maybe maybe in awe of her is too too big but something in that range where he's kind of like wowed by her ability and she's learning how to use the lithiometer solo you know a description she uses about climbing down the ladder in the dark is something that farter quorum says to her right in the book mm-hmm. and she generated that herself in the show how do you feel about how they're changing up the way that she's learning the lithiometer i don't know, I, I you know last week uh, joanna was talking about how um she really didn't see i think uh that uh daphne being like that having that craftiness that uh lyra has in the books so much like the daphne lyra having the, the the craftiness that book Lyra had. And this episode, I think we started to see it. Mm-hmm. I really think we started to see it this episode. Um, you know, like you said, uh, Alaric, uh, you know, she's teaching herself about the alethiometer as she's talking to uh, Father Corum. You know, there was a, a wisdom and uh, an earned um, self-awareness. Like she really seems to have seems to have learned a lot about herself since she left her at college. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like she's coming off the cuff of Ma Costa, like, you know, blowing up her world after having just heard that Lord Azrael was her father. And then Ma Costa's like, yeah, and your mom's. And she's like, what? And I think this is where that, um, you know, kind of like a, almost i mean not quite but kind of like where those well, those little parts like in in the book of the golden compass where towards the end of the book lyra realizes there are other things that she she doesn't need some things anymore because now she has other things and this knowledge i think for her she's like you know what like because she says to farta quorum i know who i can trust at some point in the in the thing she says i know who i can trust whereas the episode before she's like how do i know what to do when i can't trust yeah. Like I can't trust anything anybody is telling me. And so somewhere in between there, she's come to terms with the fact that she's able to, like master, the master said, trust her own counsel and, you know, have a sense of, of what's right yep. Yep. and to follow it. So, and mm-hmm. I think we are seeing that here. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, the Egyptians are like family to her. She's really finding her way with them that she's feeling more like Egyptians. He says in this episode that she's like, you said I was practically Egyptian, right? You know, mm-hmm. so she's really feeling a part of that group, even though John Fa is still like, are you sure she should come with us? Are you sure she should be here? But and Farda Quorum's like, yeah, I think that we need her. This is important. Um, you know, they're, they're going to war and they could use her skills. She's mm-hmm. already showing that she's important to them. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, she's got a, a fairly uh, robust wardrobe this episode too. Oh, major wardrobe change! Yeah. Since she got be, uh, joined the, the Egyptians, she's gotten a whole set of clothes. Full makeover. I mean, she, she, twice. Yeah, mm-hmm. she changes at least twice an episode. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm impressed with what they're giving her. This one feels like coat. the one. Yeah, this one feels like the one she's going to be in for the rest of the, this this season right oh, sure the 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 cold the weather gear yeah mm-hmm. you know other than you know what she might wear in the facility you know th- this feels like this is her gear yeah 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 uh, and it was funny they were like not really shopping just kind of like taking stuff I mean, there was people i guess they were in a store but they were just taking stuff and tr- putting it on and she's just like i guess this fits and that was it and, you know, they didn't really work at it that hard <laughs> you know i i love towns like that in, oh, in, yeah, real, in real life too I, I love going to like new england towns and my my favorite places that you know i've i've ever been are or like uh, halifax new hampshire uh, halifax nova scotia you know you're you you've got that old sea town feel and they've got uh really neat markets by the water things like that and um you know clearly charleston is filthy <laughs> and, and nine, very 19th century it doesn't look like halifax at all but still had that same 
C market town feel that I just I, I love. Oh yeah, it's like it's like a a, a dirty bed and breakfast that he's in. You know, he comes down yeah. from upstairs and they serve him up some beans and bacon. Um, what, what we call, call it scram. He called it scram. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking scrambled eggs, but there was no scrambled eggs on the plate. No, <laughs> <laughs> short for scrambled, but there's no scramble there. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a there's a real lived in feel. There's another. Um, remember Hook? They built the whole set for where mm-hmm. Captain Hook lived, and it was like there's so much stuff going on. There's shops and there's things. This was on a smaller scale, but yeah, it felt like there was real. It was really tangible yeah. and realistic. That's and a re- location. So- it's a continuance of what we got with Egyptians, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like that, that's what we're, they're building such a, a detailed world that it's so easy to kind of like find yourself like getting lost in just like the little details. Right. Yeah. What would have solidified it for me was if they would have gone in, it was, there was like in Frozen, like that Oaken's sauna and he would have been like, hello, <laughs> like that's all I would have needed. I know, family. Some guy to be like, hello, family. And I would have been done. I would have been, been the best scene ever. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for this violence. Um, so uh, Lyra goes with with Particorm to, to see the, sort of the witch's council or speak to the witch's representative. And this scene really plays like the book. Oh, yeah. Top, like really top to bottom. But one element, and it's very strong. One element was the reveal of Lyra locating the cloud pine mm-hmm. and then that the cloud pine were in little vials, tiny little things. And it's so different than what I had in my head that I'm just kind of like still wrapping my head around it. But I also loved where all these things were kept. And these are, it was almost like a communication tool for why they kept them. They could communicate with the different witches. Mm-hmm. I mean, I loved it. It had an order to it. There was this, there were, you know, there was, Lannisel knew what it was. Like he, Lannisel, how do you say, what was it? Who is it again? What's his name? Lannisellus, Lancelius, Lancelius. Lancelius. Right, Lancelius. Yeah. Like there was some order that he knew because as soon as she picked it, he knew he, she had picked the right one. But I guess kind of love it. It was such a, it looked neat and the, you know, all the little different shapes of the jars and it just, it really felt like it fit the aesthetic of the, of the, of the set and the scene anyway. And, um, I, I I almost felt, and this is just, this is the OCD in me, like it was so much more orderly than like in the book where there was just this huge line of like cloud pine laying around. I was like, wow. Well, it was how outside they... too. Yeah, it? it was all yeah. outside. And I'm like, oh, look, neat rose with <laughs> bottles. I was so happy. I was like, oh, they're her. Yep, that's exactly right there. Second row down and four over. That is hers. But they were like labeled it. and it drove me nuts. Like they that was labeled. what bothered me because it's like well, I hear their labels. How does he know which one is which? True. <laughs> He's got a system. The He's got a database. Yes. Yes. Yeah, let me open up my spreadsheet. <laughs> Excel. Uh, so he's. He's interested in Lyra and he he suggests, just as in the book, that they would do right by getting the services of an armored bear, which I'm sure had Travis squeeing like crazy. Check uh, out my insert. <laughs> uh, and he, they. You know, just the mention of Serafina here, I was like, are we going to see like, are we already going to see her? Is she, yeah. you know. Ah, it's, now it feels like, oh, my God, we're already four episodes in like, ah, this is really happening. Um, so so he gives Lyra the little piece of cloud pine to yeah. that if she needs to communicate with her, she can use that. He doesn't really explain how she could do that, but that's OK. Suspension of disbelief. She'll figure it out. Maybe you chew on it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we we do jump. Back and forth a little bit, mostly between what's going on with the Magisterium and then what's happening in Trollison. So let's step back into what's going on with the Magisterium at this point and Mrs. Coulter. Right. So Mrs. Coulter visits the Magisterium and there's a great scene where the monkey is trying to either receive or give affection to her when they're coming down the steps. Yeah. And she just like slaps his hand. Mm-hmm. And this happens again later when she's writing the letter mm-hmm. and I forget exactly what she said in that scene, but like this, it, I, I'm not gonna say I feel bad for this monkey, but like, I'm starting to feel some kind of way about this monkey. She's really emotionally abusive to it, to him. 
Oh yeah, yeah. no. I totally he's he's a mess. Way. He is, and it's I mean, it's like right. It's like being mad at the kid for acting this way, but it's the parents' fault. Like you do to me. And I'm like, and and so now I I do. I unfortunately, and I hate myself for it. I'm just like, I wrote that poor monkey. Yes. I did. And then I made a kind of a mad frowny face because I'm like, I can't believe I feel bad for this thing. But I really do like, because it, it legitimately tries for genuine like affection or genuine mm-hmm. connection and she is just she shuts it down like she's not having it she mm-hmm. won't and i'm thinking that how must that be to have like it's that's your soul mm-hmm. to literally have your soul like vying for affection and attention and you're denying it those things like it's just such an yeah it's a terrible terrible thing i do kind of feel bad she's so disconnected from her emotional self like, like literally like, yeah it, it, in actual fact you know, right. There's a scene where she goes into the room to meet with, I guess, the high priest, and she walks in and stops, and the monkey hops up on the bench beside her, and she's talking, and then she goes away all the way around to the other side of the bench, and the monkey's far away from her, and he like comes closer to, he's like constantly trying to be close to her, and he has to really work at it mm-hmm. to be near her because she's so mm-hmm. distant, and she's in her own. head like her own head. She's got her own stuff going on and, and he's so not important unless she needs him to do something. Yeah. yeah. I'm still wondering if they're going to go back to this, how far he can get away from her. Cause this mm. one, he felt very close to her. He was very close to her this whole episode. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's because he wanted to be not because he has to be anymore where she has to have him there anymore. Hmm. The, um, I mean, I, you know, I think it goes back to her being uh, such a sociopath, though, right? Like she's so disconnected from the real emotions, and she can, but she can manipulate them as as necessary. You know, like when she needs the monkey to be there, the monkey's there. You mm-hmm. know, and here she is manipulating the magisterium yep. in this in this scene where she's like, um, "I've got Asriel." Mm-hmm. You know, she this is a little exposition here. She has Asriel. Um, and she's willing to trade him for some information because she wants to ask their elethiometer and their elethiometer ex- expert one question. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that question turns out to be something that I'm wondering, did she get the answer to this? Immediately? Now? Yeah, Does she have it so. now? Is she, no. she going to have the name? Yeah, I don't want to blow already? it up here yeah, no, like, during this yeah, discussion. I, but like, I mean, he said it could take weeks. Right. He's like, for me to get an answer, it could take weeks and weeks and weeks. She's like, I don't care. But when you get it, I need to be the first to know. And she's like, who is Lyra Balakwa? But doesn't that show just how amazing Lyra is? Like she's talking to the alethiometer. Alethiometer is getting her answers. And this is like, it's going to take weeks before it provides an answer. A huge Mm -hmm. room with volumes and volumes of books and this like kind of mousy, squirrely, radish guy, you know, that's sort of like in his little cave working on mm-hmm. it all the time. But we, you know, she's not the only one wanting to ask the alethiometer something. Our boy, our very handsome and sharply dressed, blue suited. Oh my God, this Corey, suit today. Cr- crushing it. The little <sighs> skinny yes. tie with the pin. Or the, the I think it must have been clip. a magisterium it's clip. clip. Oh. oh man, it was nice. So he, he, he wants to know what Grumman what was the first version of the question? Because he had to rephrase it, right? He just asked straight up, what did Grumman find? Yeah. But he, he said he had to change. He, he changes he, the phrasing. Up. Then he changed it to how do I find out what Grumman That's found? right. That's yeah. right. And it was sort of he had to use another threat. He had to threaten to expose his p- proclivity, proclivities. Yeah. What predilections. He- predilections. Yeah. His nasty predilections. Like, yeah. What is he into? Then, yeah. you know, I thought about the priest thing and I was done. Yeah. Was done. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, something, it's something gross and something creepy. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Probably won't even know. I don't, I don't need to know, but I know nope. that he's, he's, gross he's and yeah, he's not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this, so the bad, the magisterium's lithiometer plays strongly in this episode. All the while we see, Lyra use it the most that we've seen her use it. She's whipping yeah. that thing out so much. So she's very almost careless about it early on because like everyone's staring at her and she's got the thing out. And, you know, finally, Varda Crumb's like, oh, put it away, put it away, put it away. Put it away. <laughs> <laughs> but she's using it. She's she's feeling more comfortable with it and she's able to read it quickly and at will. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So who is Lyra Bilakwa? We're going to. I don't know. This feels. It feels big. This feels important. And I don't know how soon we're going to find out. It does cut away. And I was mm-hmm. thinking, man, how long is it going to be and how long, how much time is passing right now? Yeah. Uh, that was, that was interesting to me. Here's my theory about how it's going to play out during the last scene. Um, as we all know what happens in the last scene, I'm not going to blow it up for people who haven't watched the remember. Uh, well, yeah, we're just watching the show, but um, they'll cut back and forth to what's going on in the magisterium. Magisterium's going to get the answer just as she goes through the portal. So there'll be like a layered narrative going on there. Yeah. And you'll yep. see her sort of walking into the distance and boom. Yeah. And we'll probably, also, we'll probably also get a shot of Will. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, we haven't. So we get to see Keza here. Keza mm-hmm. comes to visit. Um, delighting for the quorum. Um, Keza is not a snow goose. No. no. And I found okay. out why. Why? Why? Um, because the they tried the snow goose thing several times, but the any time they tried the snow goose, the talking snow goose, it looked far too cartoonish. So they decided to find another bird. I wanted to find a bird that was native to that area and that was also represented power, but uh, they could not make a talking goose without making it look goofy. Hmm, that's interesting. It's but they ver- could make a talking bear not look goofy. Yeah. Or a talking. I bet beaks are hard. Ermine? I bet I bet a beak is hard. Yeah, because you, because you, you know, the little beak, you don't have to see as much like the this going on here. But mm-hmm. when you have sort of a big, it becomes like the Pixar. You know how much they they sort of their beaks are malleable and they can like move around and really mm-hmm. enunciate. I wonder if that became a little bit of a challenge. And it was just like you know opening and closing a beak, yeah. a giant beak. I wonder if it just kind of looked like Howard the Duck. Like talking, and then now, they were like, "Oh now, heck no!" And <laughs> now I want her demon to be Howard the Duck. <laughs> that's my that's my new head, head, head cannon achieved. <laughs> that would be uh, quite the singing, crossover. Eyes of the Duck, sung by um, oh Lord, uh, by Beverly. <laughs> God, uh, so, so uh, Case is small, but uh, but carries some significant weight in what. Uh, he says, which is that she's pretty much on board. He wants to, he asks basically, are they going to war? And that she would support them, yep. essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, Farter Quorum, uh, there's a couple things that happen in, in a very short period of time. One is that Lyra gets to see the Aurora, just like in the book, where she's laying and looking at the Aurora with Pan, and she sees the city in the sky yep. very briefly. Mm-hmm. And it disappears. And and Pan is at his cutest, although his Arctic fox is real cute. Yeah. Real cute. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Thumbs up on the Arctic fox. For a second, I thought he was a Pomeranian. And then... <laughs> <laughs> He's a show like, dog. Yeah, exactly. Show dog with papers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's, the, he's a little... His uh, it's little just his little pause. I just love it. And we're dying. We're drowning in adorable stuff right now with like and Baby here's the thing. Yoda and yep. all that stuff. And I was dying to ask you guys when I when I saw this, I was I wanted to ask, and I'm going to ask the our, our listeners uh, to weigh in as well. Um, Pan or Baby Yoda? <sighs> Man, yep. that's quite, that's a choice. Yeah, Baby Yoda's pretty cute, but Baby Baby Yoda doesn't talk yet. No. Um, no, but he coos. He, he's very he cute. He's cute, and he plays with a little ball on the end of the shifter. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> he eats frogs. He, he, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has a little robe that's like a little bit too high and a little bit too big around his neck. He's very oh cute. My god. Yes. I, 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 I mean, I will for my own. I will have to definitively say that I would take a baby Yoda anytime. First. It's pretty cute. It's like a shaved gizmo, a green shaved. <laughs> it kind of, it, yeah, it kind it's of is really, really cute. I mean, you know, it's apples and oranges because they're so cute, both of them. But yeah, there's there's something about that little Yoda. Anyway, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, so we're we get to see the Aurora. We get to see the, the city in the sky, which is was pretty exciting. Uh, but also Fartacorum 
has a moment where he gets to tell his a very brief version of his story. And Joanne, I see you over there shaking your head. I could not handle it. Listen, listen. And my Travis knows. <laughs> listen, my Travis knows this. I know you know this, Travis. Alaric, you may not know this, but like, I, I I pride myself on being sort of hardcore, and I can count on my hand like the number of times I've cried because of something either in a book or, or in a movie and my freaking eyes were wet and I wrote in my notes, I wrote, damn you farticorum. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there and my eyes were I was just like, boop, 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 boop. I couldn't, yeah. I, I, I couldn't, it was so, and he is such an amazing actor. Mm -hmm. He is, he, you know, but he was able to pull, I mean, the pain, the pain that he was able to show in not very many words, you know, in these shots that are kind of going back and forth between Lyra listening and, and, and him speaking. And I just, it, 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 it killed me. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He really was really nailed that scene. Even when he sees Keza, he, he missed him. Like you can see that he yeah. really he so missed happy him. To see him. So happy yes. to see him. Yeah. And look nervous. Like, Oh, I know I look different. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. you know, I'm, I'm still. Yeah, I yeah. know uh. I'm not. Oh my God. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was really strong. And, and just yeah. what I hoped for. You know, this, yes. the, the story was longer in the book, but I thought they, they really got the, the essence of it, yeah. you know? Um, and it makes me really excited to see them together oh, when, so when we so see yes. uh, Serafina for the first time. I, I think that's going to be kind of a thrill. Because yeah. he's he is real genuine and he's sweet and he's got these very just the eyes that are speaking so much. You know, he's saying a lot with his eyes. Yeah. It's going to be that's going to be really great. Yeah, uh, you're going to have you're going to be it's going to be dusty in your room again next. Oh, week. so dark. Oh, somebody's <laughs> cutting onions. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so we should uh, before we dive into bear action, because there's a lot of bear action. Um, what did you think of Sissiman, which is kind of a new character who's the 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 commander of the police in town yeah. uh, play, played by Dudley Dursley Dudley Dursley yes yeah yeah and he looks really different I really know different. I miss I miss I miss the role I yeah. miss the round he he's, was also in up. he is and he was also in um the oh Coen gosh. Brothers uh, yeah the one yeah. on Netflix mm -hmm. and I remember oh, was he really the Buster yes. Sparks one Wow. Yeah. Yes. And and I remember watching it and thinking, who is that? Like, I could not pin him. And then when I finally did, I was like, holy crap. Like, yeah. you know, it, it was so it was very his features are like totally reversed. Now he has these kind of like sunken eyes and he has yeah. a very pointy chin instead of this like kind of round, you know. But he yeah, still has the ears. ears. Yeah. He does yes. still have the ears. Yes. Um, and he's and he he plays that part, I think, well. Uh -huh. That's yeah, a good it, it part worked. It, he he brought some. He brought some gravitas to it. He brought like in short amount of screen time, he established the character and like what his role was. You know, Lee steals the, his watch like immediately. He's like the first thing you see is him sort of front and Lee because we don't want no aeronauts here. And Lee takes his watch. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay. laughs> now, you know, touching on uh, Thief Lee, uh, I, that's been a problem with people online for since the, we first saw that that was a, a thing uh, in the first preview of uh, Lee stealing things. You know, I I kind of like it. I kind of like it um cuz he only kind he only steals from people that he's in conflict with. It's not like he's stealing from just an, any random person. I mean, if he's fighting you, he's also robbing you and I think that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think that's incredible. He's like it's like Robin Hood. Exactly. You know, I mean, who 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 faults Robin Hood? Nobody. It, it gives him kind of an outlaw edge, you know, that that Lee in the book doesn't doesn't really have. You know, he's just an adventurer. But this kind of gives him a little outlaw flavor that when he leaves town, people are always, like checking their pockets like oh, what what happened to me? You know, like he just leaves a little trail of people like patting their pockets yeah. or like I'm missing something, you know, but he doesn't go nuts where he's taking everything. But he's like you know, taking a little bit. He, he gets in a fight so he can steal stuff. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I'm kind of moving away from the Han Solo comparison and thinking more Star Lord. Yeah, a little bit. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. that's a little bit. I mean, the coat mm -hmm. is really similar. Very much so. 
You talked about the coat already, right, Joanna? I love that coat. Coat is killer. And the undersuit is really good, too. It's amazing. Uh, It's like a burgundy leather. Yeah. um, Lots of ties and stuff on it and and, and, and buckles. And it's kind of steampunk. It's like the edge of steampunk. Yes. Yes. They are really nailing. They are just nailing costumes. Oh, for sure. Oh, uh, Mrs. Coulter's red dress and her oh like God. 17 inch heels that I'm she's walking sure. around yeah, how did she even walk in that it was like she looked amazing in oh this episode God. i know yeah. I, I also like how she noticed it and <laughs> she knows that she did because she's yes. like all the guys and all, all the the guys in the magisterium uh, she turned she uh, plays she dumb back. too she plays yeah. dumb a little bit she's like ah. oh no 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 <laughs> she knows her milkshake <laughs> all to the yard are you kidding me <laughs> But the she thing is exactly what she's doing. She, but she, I, what I loved, and I wrote that down. What I loved about that is she's not enjoying it. No, she and I and, and I love that she said that because it was such it was such an f you yeah to the magisterium because it it's like you're bringing me here and they want to they 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 want to control me and they want to chastise me and they want to shame me. But boy, do you like to look at me? Yeah, especially when I'm like from behind. Like, and I thought, damn straight, like. Yeah, you know she she when when it suits their kind of whatever you know she's acceptable. It's mm-hmm. good like you know they, they don't mind having her around for that kind of thing. Right. Um. So I did have to stand with her there for a minute. Yep. Yeah. That's was... the thing. You know, standing with her, I don't think is bad because if you're able to stand with the monkey, you're standing with her a little bit too. True. Well, they are the they're yeah they're of a piece. Huh? Yeah. True. Yeah. It's, I mean. I, Oh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna, I was just going to sort of defer to you actually <laughs> on this. <laughs> I find that for me, it's it's usually the the feminist things that I can cling to the most, or or, or try to in some way. I can be like, I understand why you're doing that. I can understand why you are trying to be this way. It's the mother things that I can't. It's the motherly things or the lack of motherly things that I can't. Mm. Um, you know, the lack of empathy for any child. <laughs> anywhere or you know like those kind of things i can't quite but um you know i was i was like i don't know i would probably break people's fingers if some guy side mouthed me like that priest did in the subtle knife I'd, I'd be pissed off and i'd come in but you know so like there's and those kind of things i feel like i can understand where she's coming from um anyway yeah i mean she's pro- i'm sure she's lived a whole life of that yeah right i mean it's and, and yeah yeah. It just ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it gets tiresome. Just so you know. Mm. <laughs> it gets super I believe tiresome. that. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. Hey, listen, when I walk around, all eyes turn. And then also some stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me and my pencil skirt. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh I don't have the hips for it, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Uh so we're so I think now is a good opportunity for us to go deep dive into our the uric the uricness of all this. Lyric Lyra gets where where Uric was when Lyra finds him at the at the the first time she sees him. That to me was so exactly what I was kind of picturing: filthy blood from previous meals, standing water, standing booze or alcohol like i don't even know what there's just liquid everywhere he looks a wreck he's filthy like filthy scarred damaged um i really felt like that this isn't a polar bear from a coca-cola commercial like they really got this sort of Again, it's like it's that lived in. This is a this is a character and a creature that has been on this in this world for a long time and has done a lot of things. And we're just catching them in the middle of their life doing something. And there's a lot going on with him. His depression or frustration kind of comes through his his like, you know, who are you? Like he gets right up in Lyra's grill and she doesn't back down. This is where she really you were saying it, Travis, earlier. She's coming into her own here she's she's feeling her the agency that we see in the book we're seeing here come into come into play she's she's not afraid of him she gets i mean he's this close to her 
You can see her hair move from his breath. And she doesn't hesitate. I mean, Not she just a flinch. Farter yeah. Quorum is is pooping his britches. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, part of me thinks Lyra is too young to know what kind of danger she's really in. But on the other hand, I just think she's just that brave. You know, she's just that brave. And, and it's awesome. It is really awesome to see, you know. Um, but then, but Yorick as, uh, as a character looked amazing, just looked amazing. And also I liked the voice acting because, you know, comparing him to Ian McKellen for a moment. Okay. You know, I'm not even going to try to, to do an Ian McKellen impersonation because everyone would mock me, um, for it. But Ian McKellen's voice is powerful no matter what he's saying, mm-hmm. you know? Like you can see him doing waiting for a good dough, and it's still Eard McCullen. And I did it anyway. Exactly. And um, but this guy like brought, you know, different layers to it to the performance that weren't there when McKellen was the bear. McKellen was just a bear the whole time. I mean, this time when we hear his voice for the first time, it's a little low, it's a little weak. There's there's just no force there and it's not until he finds out that the arm that he could have he could get his armor back that his voice starts to to get stronger again like there's there there are real layers to this performance that there weren't in mckellen's performance i can't believe that's something that i'm saying but uh i like this one better you you know yeah you're right mckellen comes with that mckellen-ness yeah from the jump yeah and it's awesome and he sounds awesome Mm -hmm. but i you're right i don't know that there was a there was less subtlety he's i I feel like the director was like give us your most mckellen mckellen-ness and he Mm -hmm. he came with that and it was and it's killer and and it's also he has to establish it this long and he has like two seconds to establish it all now we get to really have several scenes before you know in the movie you know it takes it's like boom two scenes and he's running to get his armor this one we get multiple visits to him in different places you you get you know he's working with metal at one point and another conversation happens and so we do get to see a little bit of evolution of his this voice actor his uh his name is joe tanberg Mm -hmm. and my understanding is that he did some of the puppetry on the on the bear and they loved his voice while he was pup doing puppetry that they sort of decided to bring him on as the voice. Good for um, him. Yeah. So I was sort of digging, I was trying to find that story, but I'll link, I'll link that story in our, on our page so you guys can read it. But yeah, he's, he's, he doesn't have that same McKellen register, but with the sound editing and the way they're building that bear voice, it's really strong. And he's and it's and it's really good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I will have to differ here. I I, I don't. I, it's Ian McKellen, and I can't. Oh, he's amazing. I, no, no, no. I know. I get but, it. I, but I I can't. I I I didn't like this particular rendition of York's voice. Necess- like better. Um, it did feel a little bit to me like he was trying to be the most Ian McKellenist McKellenist <laughs> he could possibly be, but. What saved it for me was by the end of the episode, when you hear other bears speak, mm-hmm. it has the same sound. And so it, it, because at first I was like, you know, just like McKellen was an angrier, kind of an angrier Yorick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when he, when Yorick is talking to Lyra in, in, in this episode, he's pretty like, he's like irritated. Like he's not sad. He's just like, get away. Like, what are you doing? Like, go away. I'm here. I hear the difference that like what you're talking about, Travis, is when Lee Scoresby talks to him and he has a a history with Lee Scoresby Uh and his guard is down with Lee Scoresby. And you can hear the the regret in his voice when he says, oh, for sure, ask you to come, you know, and that was Mm -hmm. that was great. For sure. And that's why I mean that there were layers. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, the Lee Scoresby um, conversation had those layers of regret the um the the bits with with lyra 
there's 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 grumpiness there's anger i think he even says that he's grumpy and um the like he's um when when they call him out when they shame him for his job like he's angry and he is ashamed like you can hear that too the um i, I yeah i think that there that he it's just more nuanced than um than what we got with mckellen because then at the end i'm getting my armor back mckellen you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just he did a full McKellen. And we we do, we really do get a lot of he gets a lot more to do here, and we get to see you know we get to see him with Lyra and Vardacorn. We get to see him with Lee, and Lee's talking about how he hadn't seen him in three years, and and like what happened, and he's not really like he's not owning up to it every detail. You know, Lee has to do a little digging as to like what exactly happened and and why he doesn't have his armor. Uh, he goes back to Sissam and has to get more details about it. You know, this is where he sees the document that sort of says that, he, you know, he's working off his his uh, his blood debt for to, you know, so he, he they've, they're keeping it from him. Um, but it takes Lyra to find the additional detail that he was he was duped. He was they got him drunk and they tricked him. So the 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 layers of the book are all here that all these details and how they're finding out all these details are all kind of present here. Um, but. You know, John Faw's like, no, nah, we don't we don't need him. He's a savage. Mm -hmm. He's he's we don't need look what he's done. Like, look at look at this place. This guy is we don't need him on our team. But Lyra's kind of I think she thinks they do. And she disagrees. You know, th again, this is her going off on her own, doing her own thing, showing up, eating Lee's breakfast and lying, you know, telling how she lies, mm -hmm. you know, a little discussion about the sort of how she plays cards, essentially. Uh, I thought it was, that was actually a really nice scene um, mm. where they were sort of playing a little cat and mouse. Uh, but she she utilizes the lithiometer and and goes and talks to talks to Yurik and shows him lithiometer and tells him where it is. And she kind of makes a bargain that if they fight, if they fight him, he's allowed to kill him. She's like, that eh, sounds fair. <laughs> Her like reaction was very much like, OK, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. what I loved about that the scene was number one that she chases him because yeah. she doesn't want to miss a thing yeah like it's so super liar she's just like you know york Burnison and wade she's like running and she's like getting like smashed in between like you know yeah, the things, things keep coming over and she's like you know squishing through um but i love that the scene played out like it did in the book yeah i i, I love because one of the things that kind of was like eh, for me in the movie was the way that they did that scene. I didn't love that they had Egyptians come and every, you know, every gun was drawn and it was, I didn't love that. I love that he is ready to crush this man's skull under his paw and Lyra is like talking him down yeah. because it, because it sets, it sets them up for the relationship that they're supposed to have. Yeah. And I love it. It was yeah, great. No, he's now, he's now her charge in a way. Like he's, he owes her a debt. You know, this is important. This is, she got his soul back. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, he's like on board for whatever this adventure, whatever it's going to lead to. You know, the the guy that he's about to kill is actually Sissaman again. This is the same yes. character, Dudley Dursley. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, I think Lee rolls up and he's like, uh, oh, uh, you uh, you having fun? I hope so. <laughs> he's got like a giant paw pressing on his head. I that was a really, uh, really fun and, and a well-delivered line. Um, so Lyra heads down to the Egyptians and... Uh, and she's kind of like, hey, are we leaving? Oh, by the way, I've got these two. <laughs> I love it. Check it. <laughs> oh my God. And John Fah's reaction is perfect. He's just like, dang it, Lyra. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he can't even. He's just like, I told you. Arr. Like, it's, it's just so funny that this man who is in charge of literally like that whole, what, eastern seaboard or western seaboard of all the Egyptians was like, Everything was just, he's like, this girl, this like incorrigible girl is totally just doing whatever she wants. But I'm yeah, sure she's like, one of your children is like that, you know? It, it's just like, I, I thought I told you not to bring that yeah. up, but it's awesome. But or, I have it. I, I like, it. yes. And it's just his face was was perfect. Yeah. And then like, and then it's like Lee rolls up and he's like, who's this? And he was like, I thought you said they wanted me. You know, like, I thought they wanted me. <laughs> and she's like, eh, I told you how I play cards, bro. 
Um, but they, you know, they Lee's smart enough. You know, he takes the he's going to do a deal. He says that you get gold for gold. He, of course, he has a high opinion of himself, <laughs> a very high opinion of himself. So now we've got an aeronaut, a balloon, an armored bear, all the Egyptians, and they're heading off on sledges heading north. Very, ex- it's pretty. Ex- I mean, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty oh, exciting. Yeah. But I'm just, I just now know what we're going to get next episode, and I'm terrified. Yeah, you, uh, well, terrified. Ballvanger is 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 talked about here. Yeah. Um, and even intercision is talked mm-hmm. about here. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that there's not a confirmation about what it is. Uh, but you know, of course, the word has a certain meaning that feels like what it is. Yeah. But they're they're not really sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so to to step what back, what's that? Called this like the mystat procedure or something along those lines. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that was the one mm-hmm. that that's how they they came the the blade. You know, that was like the blade. Yeah. So the uh, just before the, all this bear action goes down, there's a scene where Mrs. Coulter, a little bit of a surprise scene, she goes into a cave with heels. Which I was like, it's not a, not a great choice. Um, goes into the cave and she speaks to Yofor Rackinson. Rackinson, and that was interesting. Yes. So first of all, his name is is, is Yoder again, it's not Yoder, like a yeah. ridiculous name that they gave him in yep. in, in the Golden Compass. Yeah. Um. So good. It was like Ragnar or something. I forgot what yeah. they called him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then secondly, these caves were pretty ominous. I was pretty into the, this whole cave thing. Because mm-hmm. um, is this one? Is, yeah. And then thirdly, that helmet was incredible. Right? That was perfect. That helmet the, the was, sort of, yeah, the teeth to make him look outset, fiercer than he is. The, totally. The horn. Mm-hmm. Totally uh, uh, a Yofer um helmet but also looked like skeletor from he-man and the masters of the universe movie <laughs> oh 100 yeah there was a I lot mean, of that absolutely yeah. frank langella in masters of the universe mm. so that was amazing oh give me frank langella as, in, in this role oh he's got a great voice yes he does uh so she we this is a, she is using him mm-hmm. um it's very obvious that she is, but we get to hear here that she is making a deal with him about him getting baptized. Yeah. And how important that is to him. And he's going to be the only only bear that's ever been and ever will be yeah. baptized. Yeah. That his desires, they've just they're just hinting at it here about what kind of bear he is and what he wants. But very little explanation about this scene, which I found to be kind of refreshing. It's not like, oh, this is this bear and this is what he's doing. This is why they're meeting. It's just sort of like a mysterious meeting with like a powerful bear. Well, she'd already started writing that letter to Oh King of the North, yeah, and all those things. Uh, it must the, have been like airship. setting up the meeting, right? Like, yeah, is, yeah. Well, and then she makes sure to lay down the 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 plot point that you know I'm the one that helped you. I mean, I think she writes it and she says it like I'm the one that helped you yep. get, get where you are, defeating. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think don't they say? Doesn't she mention? Or does she? Do they mention how he gets it in there yet? I don't think so. I think it's just yet. more like I'm the one that helped you get where you needed to be. Correct? Yeah. 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 Um, and so it's just that weird, you know, it's that I'm, she's playing off the way she was in the book, which is kind of sweet talking him, which is yeah. kind of interspecies. I don't know, gross. A little gross. A little gross. And um, and she even has to do that for like a bear. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, sister yeah. even has to pretend she's like a stupid, like, whatever female for a bear yeah, to get to get what she wants. And I know she's using it <coughs> like she's using it. And I know that. But it's also just kind of like because that's what they want and expect. And it was just I'm just like, ah, but. um, And it yeah. even works on a bear. Like, it that's works the on thing. a bear. It yeah. even works on a bear. I mean, what the heck? Like, guys are universal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was, I, but I, you know, I, it's interesting because what I'm, I'm wondering is what's back behind the caves. Like, how is it, you know, cause there's this kind of rough exterior and I'm wondering what the rest of it looks like back there. Is it, con- yeah. Is it connected? Is it, is it like a catacomb that leads yeah. somewhere? 
Um, we've seen, you know, in the teaser, sort of like what the palace looks like. So it doesn't look like a cave. Uh, so, yeah, I'm wondering where they are in relation. It's like, why to... is he in a cave? Like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it feels like or they were meeting. They were meeting in private. That's why it was. A yeah, cave. it was a secret meeting. Yeah. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on here. And the teaser for next week looks great. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. Uh, Serafina. And since the and since the cloud pine is so tiny, it appears that they fly. They just fly. Mm-hmm. You, they're not like holding a branch, right? They, they just have a little sprig that they put in their pocket, and they can fly. And that makes a lot of sense. It works for me. Yeah, yeah. like but just that you know descriptions of them just being like flowy and billowy and just kind of like. Whoosh. I know nobody can see me, but whoosh, she looks scoring. amazing. And she looks amazing. her costume. Looks, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, no, I mean, oh, like, I thought you meant me. Jo- jo- Joanna looks I amazing. You me too. I was like, whoosh, doing yes. that move. Yes. <laughs> but also the costume, her costume looks amazing. It does. And Joanna's yes. costume, she, Joanna's wearing a costume right now. You guys can't see it, but she's wearing a Serafina <laughs> costume. But also the Serafina costume from the show looks amazing. But you will if you watch this on YouTube tomorrow. So, oh, we get yeah. to see you guys put the trailer. Oh, yes, that's great. That's right. Yes. Um, and, and even the, the teaser has um, Lyra riding on the back of Yurik already. Yes. Which oh, I was like, yes. e- he's big. He is big. He's yes. real big. Yeah. I think I saw some place where they were uh, mapping up this. He's like nine feet tall. He's, he's humongous. He's gigantic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like holding my arm up as though that means something here. His, his armor looks good too. I really like the way how they've done his armor. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's not fancy. It's very straightforward. And the way it's built is very like what I pictured. Very straightforward. Yeah. Very. Rock Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Fun- functional. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But it almost looks like when oil mixes with water. Do you know what I mean? It has this like kind yeah. of amazing looking yeah. like not texture but just like way to it and it looks it looks really it looks really great yeah yeah <clears throat> any other thoughts on this on yorick well on anything on anything i have one favorite part Ooh, hit me. my my favorite part was when was when mrs Coulter was in with the magisterium and the hunched over magisterium guy i can't remember what he said to her and she just slow claps yes <laughs> I was like, wow, sarcastic slow clapping works in every dimension world. Like, <laughs> I, I'm set. I'm totally set. That was, that was... Slow clapping the shit out of him. And it was the best. That was killer. Yeah, that was that really was good. That was my favorite. I was like, wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she, he, he really thought he was doing something. He really did. <laughs> he really and, did. He's like, and I'm taking away your power. <laughs> oh, really? No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm doing that from now on to everybody. You should. I'm you should. <laughs> yep. I'm going to do. Awesome. I had lots of favorite parts. I don't know if I could narrow it down. I, it was a, th- this felt very much like the book. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and just thinking that we got a whole hour in Trollison. You know, we yeah. when in the in the movie, it's like five minutes, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's like no time at all. We got a whole hour living in this world. Yeah. Pretty. It's it's great. You know, even a, a small moment with Lyra and and um, Tony Costa. Yeah. You know, which was yeah. nice. It was nice. Um, just the, the way they're able to expand it and stretch it out and give us we can live in it a little bit longer. It's I've been really appreciating it in the series form. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I'm I've, I'm increasingly convinced that they should not try to do uh, two hour adaptations of any book ever. I think we're I think we really need to stick to series. Yeah, we've moved past it at this point. Yeah. TV, yeah. you know, it's the golden age of TV. So we might as well just I mean, look, look at this Lord of the Rings crap that we're getting next year. Right. You know, they spent two hundred fifty million dollars just for the rights to do it. Yeah. And so you know, it's going to be yeah. huge. Yeah. Huge, huge, that? huge. Wheel of Time. Yep. Foundation. Dune. Three Dune. movies for Dune. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Plus a series. Yeah. Oh man, we are oh, we are gosh. living in the salad days of geek geek culture. We are living in the days where I can't work anymore and I need to just sit home and watch TV and that's it. We watch The Mandalorian. We've got oh, stuff to watch. Oh my god. And, uh, and 
Watchmen. What? I was just Watchmen, saying, Watchmen was insane last night. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. It was Holy insane. crap. Oh my god. It, it, Travis Travis tweeted, he was like, did Damon Lindelof just make the original Watchmen book better? Right? Yeah. And it, and he kind of did. So Mark Bernard told a story about he, he and Damon Lindelof are friendly from the lost days because um mark bernardin wrote for ew at the time and he wrote like about lost every week that was like his thing and he interviewed lindelof about lost and they sort of kept in touch and they they're sort of friendly and they have meals every once in a while so he had this he said oh you want to have him at lunch or whatever and so damon lindelof said warner warner came to me and they asked me if i wanted to do Watchmen, and 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 i don't know if i should do it like i feel weird about it this is like you know he loves the Watchmen. And Mark Bernardin gave him a little piece of advice, which was, well, if you say no, they're going to go to somebody else and get it. Like, they're just going to keep going until someone says yes. So what do you think you could bring to the material? You, you love it. Like, you know what you would do with it. And you know that you could do something special with the material. Maybe. Are you going to let somebody else do it and ruin it? Like, are you going to let somebody else take a shot at it and not give it the, what you want? And what he That's seems to be sad. doing. And with the with the the writers and his team and like the concept, it's so incredible what they're doing with oh this. My God, yes. And I each mean, episode it, is as strong as the one before. Like yes. there hasn't been an episode yet where I was like, you know, sometimes there's things when you watch it and you know it's like a filler. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a filler. But even the episode about Looking Glass was like, what? like that, that was a was killer episode. Oh my God. Freaking nominal. Yes. Yes. It was phenomenal. And I was like, oh my God, it did not feel like you were just trying to get me further in the you know, plot points or you're just trying to, you know, whatever it was. It was so fantastic. And every time he plays in the original work, he's made it better. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking glass episode again, the the ep where we get to uh, see Silk the Spectre squid too. and we yeah, get oh, to the see squids. the death. Yep. Yeah. And and yeah, Gene, and Gene Smart crushing it in this oh my role. God. Totally crushing it. Oh, my God. Her the phone call to Doctor Manhattan, like yes. just that, just the conceit of what that is and what she was using it for, it was un unbelievable. And how she's incorporated the uh, the the lessons of her father into who she is now. Yes. I mean, oh my God. Yeah, the memory pills. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, that was yeah. incredible yeah. Con a concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just wow. Yeah, that episode blew my mind last night, and I was just like. Yeah. Yeah. I I I was stunned. I, 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 I think I think we all thought that Lewis Gossett Jr. was Hood of Justice. Some yeah. for some reason it made sense. But yeah. getting to see how it played out and and what led him to that, even just the way that they shot, they were able to sort of seamlessly move between actors playing the same role. You know, every once in a while yeah. Regina Regina King would pop into that role and it was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, right. She's living this right now. She's mm -hmm. experiencing this. It was really smart. Yeah. Yeah. That this series is out and out incredible. And I just realized that there wasn't a an Adrian Veidt scene. Right. Uh, this nothing. Episode. Mm -hmm. I just just dawned on me that he was in it. Last week's was so great. Like him yeah. taking all the frozen bodies and like yes. writing out a yes. word on is is it Io or Europa? What what a uh, Europa one, you're, on Europa is, writing yeah. a little word. Yeah. <laughs> Save me D. Save me D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I'm convinced it's Dan. I'm convinced it's Dryberg. Because <laughs> what other D is in this? Right. You know, it's, it's gotta so be bizarre um what, what's his name um night owl what do you think about tom misson tom misson in this from um from uh sleepy hollow i've never seen Sleepy. did you ever watch sleepy hollow are you talking about the series or the movie yeah the series no i didn't watch the series oh uh, it was good it was anyway, my daughter's it. watching it right now actually he played oh. ichabod crane no i mean who is he in this oh he plays the the uh mr he plays the 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 male butler? clone the butler yeah oh okay yeah okay. he has he's, he has a he doesn't have a beard but in, as ichabod crane he's that whole thing is nuts him harvesting the little oh, it oh. was like oh, and just like oh the yeah. play the play where then he just incinerates he torches oh one of them. my god yeah it's nuts it's so nuts 
how and I'm also convinced that the thing that landed in the back of the Kent farm, I mean the Clark farm, was the um is Adrian. Oh, oh, so we got a little it's like a flash forward almost. Like yeah, I think I think the time. whole Adrian Vite thing happened mm. already. That, and that's true. he landed in the Kent farm. The cold the cold open on that couple selling eggs with the Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers song. Yes. Was so great. And then how she how she played them as far as like, oh, well, you know, you, I want to give you this kid. And they're like, oh, I don't know. We, that ship's already sailed. She's like, no, I, I did. I went ahead and did it. <laughs> and here, it is. here right. it is. Yeah. And it was like, so I did it 35 minutes ago. You know? <laughs> right. And was, so, oh, you have three minutes, and if not, I'm just going to destroy it anyway. So it's up to you, whatever. Like, and she's like, no, 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 I'll give it to a good family. <laughs> which I don't believe. I think she was going to destroy it. Oh, it I, do, I do, too. It was the first of three instances when they destroyed a clone. They just threw clones away. It would They would have done it then. They did it with a dog. And they, um, what's his name? Fight was doing it. Mm-hmm. And that's got to mean something. Oh, the dog with it's like, uh, he's like, oh, that one's a little smaller. Yeah. She, she just incinerates it. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's crazy. That It's so, there's, it's so deep. There's so much going on. I love it so much. It's, it's really good. Do. It's really, really do. good. It's really good. It should win all the things. Yeah. All the things. Can all we list this as a Watchmen podcast now? We can start can, making. Can we do that? Uh, <laughs> S- Simple cast keeps popping up like. You should do another podcast, and it's sort of trying to suggest like a little chat window open opens yeah. up. It's like, do you want to do a new podcast? I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm barely able to do this one. <laughs> you know, we're like, we do like seven days a week, like every single thing. We become like our own cottage industry. Of That's what I'm saying. Stuff. We quit our jobs. We need to quit our jobs. We ain't it making is. no dough on this. Ain't no making no bread. I've been watching YouTube videos now, man, on how to build your YouTube followers, and let me tell you. It's a lot of work and I can't I, do it. No, <laughs> you have to commit. You really have to commit. You really do. I could you have really some do. bake sales. That might help. There to get go. to get followers on YouTube. Man, that no, would be just killer. to raise to raise some money. Oh yeah. No, just some bake sales, maybe. What's your baking skill level? Pretty good? Oh, it's it's uh, elite. Yes. Okay. I must say. Okay. I love it. If I could yeah. do that instead of teach, I would do that. Yeah. Well. Yeah, if we ever do meet up, I like uh, anything with bananas in it. I like those <gasps> bananas. I like banana bread <laughs> and banana bananas. Bread muffins and banana things. Banana, banana things are things. delicious. Yeah, mushy bananas mixed into pancakes. I like that. Wow. Mixed banana and chocolate, and you've got oh, a but, winner. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that's better to me is banana and raspberry. Banana, banana, raspberry. Banana, banana raspberry. I'm not banana yeah. raspberry. I take that back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's getting late. Chocolate and raspberry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Is, that's good. Uh, so we should do it. So what we should do is a food podcast. Is that what you're saying? I'm totally. We could, down. we could do that. I'm down. We, we could do, do a food, food, food yeah, okay. a food and Watchmen co- podcast combo. So we can do it all at one time. Yes. We could cook things based on each Watchmen episode. We could call it Calamari Cast. <gasps> Great. We could, we go. could we could make like clone burgers and stuff. <laughs> okay, it's it's getting late. It is late, and, and it's, we're very it's very clear. It's very clear. It's very clear. Okay, that's my wedding um, song. All right, y'all. All right, thanks for Take listening, care. guys. Take care. Okay. Bye.